the Madman! Welcome to the huge card reveal, and I do mean big because there's 135 cards in the set and only 54 have gotten revealed. So, we're gonna break this into a few pieces. And the name of the game in this expansion appears to be Packages. There's a lot of class cards which all fit into one particular archetype together. Starting with Demon Hunter, you've got Meta Morphin, one mana, one two, Taunt, Murloc, Balakrai. If you've cast a Fell spell this turn, gain plus two, plus two. Clearly a really good deal if you're playing a Fell deck. And why would you want to play a Fell deck? Well, let me just go ahead and say what package we're going to be looking at first. The Jace Darkweaver package. Cast all Fell spells you've played this game. It is possible there will be enough cards in this Demon Hunter archetype to build a fell deck. But obviously a 1 mana 3-4 is a very good deal. Uh, so you'd want to play this with some cheap fell cards. Interestingly enough, uh, this seems like a bit of a control card. Uh, perhaps Demon Hunter will get a mid-range or maybe even control fell deck. And that does fit into the general idea that Jay Starkweaver is the big finisher of that deck. So we got Fell Barrage, which is clearly a control type card. Two mana, Fell Spell, deal two damage to the lowest health enemy twice. It's almost like a mini consecration for half the mana. Uh, two mana, deal two, twice. It's like a multi-shot, except it costs half the mana and does two thirds the damage. And if your opponent has just one four health minion, Fell Barrage kills it as well. By the way, funny to note, uh, if your opponent doesn't have any minions, this will just deal four to face. Also, if your opponent is almost dead and they play a big taunt, this will deal four to face. That does make it a possibility for the finisher with Jace. Another fell card, Chaos Leech, three mana, life steal, deal three damage to a minion, outcast deal five instead, clearly meant for a control type deck, uh, three mana to deal five and heal five is a fairly good deal when compared to the Warlock cards, which are dealing three and healing three for two mana. It's just that we haven't seen Demon Hunter control type cards like this. Uh, there's I-Beam, which has been good. This is like big I-Beam. I happen to like it. Maybe I'll start playing Demon Hunter more as there are more uh, fell control options. Fell Gorger, a minion that synergizes with fell spells. Four mana, four, three demon. Velocry, draw a fell spell, reduce its cost by two. So that's just very efficient. Assuming you get the full discount of two, sometimes you're playing cheap fell cards, which will be one. Uh, so maybe it only reduces the cost by one. Uh, if you only reduce the cost by one, this is equivalent to a three mana four three draw a card, which is extremely good. Uh, if you actually reduce a card by two, it's like the equivalent of a two mana four three draw a card. This is clearly a card that's meant to push fell decks. The question then is, can we construct a good fell deck? What does it look like? Is it a combo deck? Is it a control deck? Is it a mid-range deck? I personally think it's a little bit of a cross between control and combo, where you play a bunch of fell cards. Uh, these are usually control cards. They keep you alive. They're spells. They're big taunts. Uh, they're draw cards. And then you play Jace, uh, where you get the big finishing blow. Demon Hunter has a second package as well, and this package is generally the draw a bunch of cards package, uh, which goes off of Final Showdown. Uh, we'll start with Sigil of Alacrity, which is a one mana at the start of your next turn, draw a card and reduce its cost by one. This reminds me a lot of Illidari Studies, uh, which is played quite heavily as a one mana card, which will get you an outcast card, which is always nice because it put it into the location which was outcast and reduced its cost by one. Uh, this has a lot of benefit as well. It is similar to Illidari Studies in that it gets you a card and reduces the cost by one. Benefit is it's from your deck, which means you'll always get a card that you purposely wanted to play in your deck. The downside is it is a little bit slow. You play this this turn and you only get an effect next turn, uh, which makes it a little bit weaker in top decking, but nice and efficient. Lion's Frenzy. Three mana zero two weapon has attack equal to the number of cards you've drawn this turn. So between Acrobatics and Skull of Gul'dan, you really could get quite a lot of attack and draw quite a lot of cards uh, with this. Don't forget that it's always default one attack because you will draw a card at the beginning of your turn. 
Hard to say if you're actually going to draw enough cards in a turn for the Lion's Frenzy to be good, but it is easy to imagine cases where you play a Skull of Gul'dan and then you draw two extra cards, and that's a six attack weapon for a single turn. And it's only got two durability, so uh, perhaps this could be just a good topper. Use it to chip in major damage, and then perhaps you use your Fell Barrage to finish your opponent off. A really interesting card. And then there's Ironbound Brute. 7 mana 6 7 demon with taunt costs 1 less for each card drawn this turn. In the case where you draw 5 cards in a turn, and that's 5 extra cards, uh, you draw the extra 1 as your normal draw, that's a 1 mana 6 7 taunt. If you just play Skull of Gul'dan and draw three cards, uh, then you've drawn four cards for turn. This is a three mana six seven. And if you happen to draw Ironbound Brute with Skull of Gul'dan, what a good deal. That's a, a free six seven. I'm seeing a possibility for this uh, Control Demon Hunter deck. Considering that the baseline for this is a six mana six seven taunt, it can never really be that bad. I got some bad news for Druid. They didn't really get a package with Lost in the Park. Uh, I was expecting to see more plus attack cards. Instead, we got the token package, uh, but the cards are pretty good for token. You have Sow the Soil. Choose one for one mana. Uh, give your minions plus one attack or summon a 2-2 two, two Treant. So you either have a permanent half a Savage Roar, or, and of course a Savage Roar you don't actually get plus two attack yourself, uh, or summon a 2-2 two, two Treant. And one mana for a 2-2 two, two isn't bad, and sometimes you have a huge board, and this will give you plus 6 attack. Nice. Definitely see this in a lot of token decks. Will we see Vibrant Scroll in a token deck? Well, this one, unlike the other one, is a uh, is not a spell. Which might be bad, because current token decks just don't run minions because of Glowfly Swarm. A Vibrant Scroll, though, one mana 2-1 Beast with Death Rattle. Shuffle 4 acorns into your deck when drawn, summon a 2-1 Squirrel. Definitely high potential. If you draw a single one of those acorns, you are getting massive value. This seems to be intended for the type of deck that will draw a lot of cards while also being swarmy. Now, how can that possibly work? Well, what about composting? <laughs> a two mana nature spell. Give your minions death rattle, draw a card. So if you've got a token deck where you play a bunch of minions out there, and then you play composting. That could be a two mana draw four or even two mana draw five. Slow, but it will majorly fill you up. Uh, if people thought Soul of the Forest was scary because it created a sticky board, this is similarly scary in that it gives you a refill. So those types of token cards kind of synergize with the already revealed Kodo mount, uh, the already revealed Oracle Valoon, the general efficiency and already revealed Park Panther, now as for the final druid card that hasn't been revealed yet, it's the Wicker Claw. This does have synergy with the quests. 2 mana, 1, 4. After your hero gains attack, this minion gains plus 2 attack. Uh, that's every single time. That's a really efficient card uh, in that if you just play this and you press your hero power button, that's a 4 mana, 3, 4. But if you play this card and then you play Pounce, that's a 2 mana, 3, 4. And you presumably use the Pounce to kill one of your opponent's minions. Very efficient. I'm not entirely sure that the plus attack deck is uh, there yet, but if it ever gets there, this will certainly be a major part of it. And Park Panther, of course, will be a major part of it as well. Very efficient. Give your hero plus three attack card. Hunter is getting a lot of cool stuff. Uh, first of all is going to be the quest package. The quest is Defend the Dwarven District. Now, on this client, I actually am unable to see the second uh, and third part of the quest. Defend the Dwarven District, though. One mana, quest line, deal damage with two spells. Reward your hero power can target minions. Now, I don't know the second part yet. It's likely going to be deal damage with two or three spells with some sort of reward. And the third part will be deal damage with probably two or three spells. I would guess 2-2-2, two, two, and two, but that's just a guess. The reward is Tavish, Master Marksman at the end. 5 mana 7-7 seven, seven, Battle Cry for the rest of the game. Spells you cast refresh your hero power. And remember, your hero power is going to be able to target minions. So this could make for actually a board control hunter deck. Control hunter! 
Control Demon Hunter also. It is worth mentioning that I don't believe it's realistic to build a quest deck for Hunter, which purely goes face with all the spells. They don't have that kind of ability currently. Uh, but they do have a bunch of cheap spells, and that quest is fairly doable. Uh, between Arcane Shot, and Overwhelm, and Wound Prey, and Bola Shot perhaps, that combined with Kolkor Pack Runner, that could make for quite the package. And let me bring up a neutral card, which is going to be very critical for all of these quest lines. Entrapped Sorceress, you're going to see a lot of her. 3 mana, 3, 4, Balakrai. If you control a quest, discover a spell. Wow. Not only is she just the default 3 mana, 3, 4, uh, you just get to discover a spell when you play her. Uh, that is quite the card, especially since a lot of the quest lines are going to revolve around spells. What a card! That really pushes all the quest lines. And we've got the new card, Aimed Shot. 3 mana, deal 3 damage, your next hero power deals 2 more damage. And because, if you have the quest, uh, you can target enemy minions with this, uh, this is kind of similar to 3 mana deal 5 damage and can be dealt to minions. Uh, that's very important because, I mean, you might not want to just hit face. But maybe you do want to just hit face, in which case this is very similar to old kill command where you use 3 mana to deal 3 damage to the face, use your hero power to deal 4 damage to the face. That's nearly like the kill command's 5. 3 plus 2 is 5, right? And you can split it up as well. Sometimes you just need to kill a minion, and then your hero power deals more damage, pressures your opponent down. Uh, this is just nice, efficient, could see play in face hunter or mid range hunter, or even this quest hunter. Now, the other hunter package here is hilarious and very scary. It's the rat package, and all of these cards are like specifically built for rats. Devouring Swarm, zero mana, choose an enemy minion, your minions attack it, then return any that die to your hand. So obviously intended for when you have a lot of minions on the board, you play the Devouring Swarm and it kind of manages to be semi-removal. You can attack the face with your rats, or you summon a bunch of rats and then immediately Devouring Swarm with them, and then you have like a full hand of rats. How is that useful? Well, with Leatherworking Kit, maybe you want your small beasts to die really fast, and then you get to draw another beast uh, with a buff. This card looks pretty bad at first until you realize that it's meant to be played with a lot of small beasts, or perhaps rats. Uh, if you look at it very generously, it's a 2 mana draw 3 cards, uh, and give a total of plus 3 plus 3. And that's efficient, if you manage to use all of the charges of Leatherworking Kit. You've got Stormwind Piper leading the rats, a 3 mana 1 6, so very hard to remove. After this minion attack, give your beasts plus one, plus one, and of course all the rats are beasts. Hard to imagine this card actually seeing play even in the rat decks because it does rely on staying on the board while you also have rats and while this survives. Uh, seems hard to give this rush also. You've got the Rodent Nest, which for four mana gives you a 2-2 with Death Rattle summon 5-1-1 one, one rats. Uh, this is a good time to remind everyone that the Rat King is the payoff for the rats, where it revives after five friendly minions die, so this is very flavorful. Uh, this card, when dying, gives you five 1-1 one, one rats. Four mana for seven, seven worth of stats, uh, though they are distributed kind of badly in that they die to one damage AoE. However, if you skin all your rats with leather working kit, then... <laughs> You can be, like, nearly all the way to drawing two beasts and giving them plus two, plus two. Well, two plus one, plus ones. And if you have a Rat King in play, it's gonna revive. And it gives you a bunch of uh, rats uh, and fills up your board so that when you play your rats of extraordinary size, uh, you'll get five, five rats. Uh, so this entire rat theme is pretty fascinating. It's been a while since we've seen it in play, but Scavenging Hyena is still in standard for those curious. And, don't forget, good ol' Sindori Scentfinder. Uh, hunters have the possibility of creating quite a lot of beasts. Question is, will that all work in a deck? Mage has some very... hot... cards! <laughs> no, but seriously, uh, the mage theme is fire spells. Starting with Hot Streak, this is a preparation for specifically fire spells. And it itself is also a fire spell. Uh, you've got First Flame, 
one mana, deal damage to a minion, add a second flame to your hand. Uh, the client does not allow me to see what a second flame is, but I will guess that it's a one mana deal two damage to a minion. Kind of reminds me of Twin Strike from Demon Hunter. Ray of Frost was popular because it was two spells in one, and you mostly wanted to deal the two damage, I believe. Uh, first flame just simply deals two damage twice. Very, very nice. While you're casting all these uh, fire spells, good time to remind everyone of the mage quest line, Sorcerer's Gambit, uh, where you cast a Fire, Frost, and Arcane spell. Uh, the fire part is going to be very easy now. Now the uh, tough part is actually Frost, by the way. Ignite! Another fire spell. Two mana deal two damage. Shuffle and ignite into your deck that deals one more damage. It is worth mentioning that with this card, you can no longer run out of a deck. It's very anti-fatigue. You play your ignite, goes into your deck, you draw your ignite, you play your ignite, goes into your deck, you draw your ignite. As long as you're only drawing one card a turn, uh, that's going infinite. Uh, this allows you to be very aggressive with your card drawing as well. This is the basis for a whole new deck, potentially. Now obviously 2 mana deal 2 damage is quite weak, and even 2 mana deal 3 damage is pretty weak, so it seems like this wouldn't be good for a deck unless you specifically wanted to draw it multiple times, uh, which would mean you would need to play a bunch of draw spells. But that could be a win condition, especially with the Mage Quest, uh, because the Mage Quest finisher has all your spells dealing plus 3 spell damage. Ignite could be the only spell that you just keep playing and playing over and over. Prestor's Pyromancer, it's a 2 mana 2-3 two, with Battlecry. Your next fire spell has spell damage plus 2. Uniquely, this does not have to be played on this turn. A great support card for fire spells. And did you think we ran out of fire spells? Uh, well, let me just remind you, we've seen this card already, but Fire Sail. Uh, imagine if you actually give this plus 2 spell damage. That's pretty sweet, dealing 5 damage to all minions. You've got new card Sanctum Chandler, 5 mana 4 5 after you cast a fire spell, draw a spell. So that just allows you to keep going. Uh, and if that doesn't look great enough for you, a uh, reminder that Hot Streak exists, and First Flame exists, and the Second Flame is presumably also 1 mana <laughs> deal 2. I look at this card and I see Gadgets and Auctioneer. Wow. And let's finish it off with the granddaddy of fire spells, Grand Magus Antonidas. 8 mana, 6-6 six, six, Battlecry. If you've cast a fire spell on each of your last three turns, cast three fireballs at random enemies. Almost like Solarian to some extent, except you're guaranteed fireballs. And there's no effort other than cast the fire spell on the last three turns. That is effort, admittedly, but if you're playing a quest deck or a deck with fire spells, it seems to me like you should be able to uh, cast a fire spell on turn 5, 6, and 7. Or just set it up so that you cast three fire spells in a row. A little bit tricky when you don't have Antonidas in your hand because uh, having it in your hand makes you realize, okay, I need to start the chain. If it's still in your deck, you might just need to keep playing a fire spell each turn and hope you draw Antonidas. Tricky. So clearly, there is a huge fire spell package for mage. Uh, this could bring in a new era of control mage, uh, since fire deals a bunch of damage, uh, often to minions, and then uh, the control mage will just draw a bunch of cards of Sanctum Chandler, and then repeatedly play Ignite until they win. Other mage cards to be revealed include Celestial Ink Set, 2 mana, 0 2 weapon. After you spend 5 mana on spells, reduce the cost of a spell in your hand by 5. Lose 1 durability. Seems difficult to pull off, but this would allow you to cheat out some of the more expensive mage spells. It would seem to me like the main payoff for that would be Deep Freeze, a card that actually provides you board advantage, and is a frost spell, uh, and is one of the frost spells that doesn't suck, which could be useful if you're completing the quest. And you have Clumsy Courier, a 7 mana 4 5, Battlecry cast the highest cost spell from your hand. I have to admit that I'm not entirely sure what the point of this card is. Sure, if you're playing a big spell deck, then maybe your highest cost spell could cost 8, Deep Freeze. Uh, maybe you want a free 4 5, and maybe you ramp this into Deep Freeze. There's very narrow uses for this right now. Uh, we just lack 
good proactive high cost spells for mage maybe an interesting card to look at in the future if mage does get future very high cost spells which are proactive and good and then you've got paladin which is really playing into both the quest line as well as the divine shield line first is a card that actually matches with both cards potentially both themes uh, blessed goods one mana holy spell it's a holy spell which means you can fetch it with knight of anointment uh, can be useful since there's not that many holy spells that are good so it fits into the quest line because it's a one cost spell also it'll always give you a secret option so that's another one cost card uh, you could also find a weapon or divine shield minion with it and maybe the divine shield is useful because you have prismatic jewel kit and you really want to play the divine shield theme more of the divine shield theme with noble mount two mana give a minion plus one plus one and divine shield when it dies summon a warhorse i am guessing similar to all the other mounts that the warhorse is a one one with divine shield uh, so that's a very efficient card it's two mana for a total of two two and two divine shields two divine shields could be really nice with prismatic jewel kit because two losses of divine shield uh, will be hand buffing your hand for plus two plus two you've got the legendary which fits into the big theme of divine shield a six mana five five high lord four dragon divine shield after a friendly minion loses divine shield which presumably includes itself give a minion in your hand plus five plus five the six mana five five divine shield is already all right uh it just happens to come with a hand buff of plus five plus five a divine shield and the hand buff have a major theme in playing with each other we've already seen first blade of rin but here's a card that can actually buff your first blade of rin to playability uh, three mana two two alliance bannerman Battlecry, draw a minion give minions in your hand plus one plus one well that's just good that's just insane uh it is the old mean streets of gadget sand card uh, two mana one one hand buff card but for one more mana and plus one plus one stats you also draw a minion that's insane uh, when you consider that the average for draw a card in your deck for three mana is like a three mana two three you're paying like one health off for giving your entire hand a buff of plus one plus one what an insane card i think you'll see this card uh in many decks that aren't focused on hand buff even uh, great card Catacomb Guard, another card that is rewarding you for buffing your hand. 3 mana, 1, 4, lifesteal. Valencry deal damage equal to this minion's attack to an enemy minion. Of course, if you buff this card, you're going to deal more damage with it, and you're going to lifesteal for more health. This is very exciting for me because Paladin is actually my pet favorite class. I am definitely going to be building a hand buff divine shield deck. That looks like a very strong mid-range deck indeed now if you really want to mix all of the packages together i think that might be possible uh, with the quest line paladin card giving you lightborn carrial that'll give your mid-range hand buff divine shield deck some real fuel since your silver hand recruits have plus two plus two the one thing that i wince at is that the reward to equip a one four lights justice does anti-synergy with Prismatic Jewel Kit quite a lot. But Argent Squire and Righteous Protector both synergize with Rise of the Occasion very well as well. It's kind of tricky. Uh, perhaps you can time the Prismatic Jewel Kit after you've gotten the 1-4 Lights Justice. And then you have City Tax. Uh, two mana, tradable, lifesteal, deal one damage to all enemy minions. This actually used to be a Priest card, which Spirit Lash, which just dealt one damage to all minions. The fact that this is tradable is really nice. You can sometimes you need the health uh, that's often when your opponent's swarming you tax them great for a control paladin deck don't really think it fits into any deck currently but the fact that it's tradable is really nice since you can just trade it if it's not usable i could definitely see this card being useful someday in the future perhaps not now but what a cool flexible card priest is getting two primary packages uh, first of all let's take a look at the face package that's right face priest is happening void touched attendant one mana one three both heroes take one extra damage from all sources this card really ramps up the aggression for both players if you're playing against the control deck that's probably the best possible matchup 
It's like effectively a 1 mana 2-3 if you're hitting the face with this. It's worth mentioning that a lot of these face priest cards uh, also are shadow based. And if you're shadow based, you can play Dark Bishop Benedictus, which turns your hero power into a hunter hero power. What a world we live in. Demon hunters and hunters have control cards. Priest has a very flexible hunter hero power, deal 2 damage to face or deal 2 damage to minions. This really could be a thing. By the way, if you happen to be in shadow form due to playing Benedictus, uh, your hero power is going to deal three damage to the face. That's a lot of damage. Shadow Cloth Needle. It is a two mana zero three weapon. After you cast a shadow spell, deal one damage to all enemies and lose one durability. You can save the shadow cards if you're playing potentially a control deck and then just combo it with specific timings where you're just going to be able to blast out a little bit of wave of one damage to all minions really which is the part that matters enemy minions even i could see that as being pretty flexible and good twilight deceptor two mana two three battle cry if any hero took damage this turn draw a shadow spell that's incredible in a face priest deck uh, you play your one drop you hit the opponent with the one drop on turn two and then you play a 2 minute 2 3 that draws a card. Wow. Face shadow curve continues with 3 mana 3 4 Siphoned. After you cast a shadow spell, deal 2 damage to each hero. So yeah, face priest could be a thing. And if there aren't enough aggro priest cards yet, this could be one of the cases where uh, it's a very cool package. And we might need more cards to flesh out the package later. Priest is, as usual, getting some control cards. You've got Shard of the Naru, one mana tradable, silence all enemy minions. So sometimes you really need to silence everything. And sometimes it's not relevant, just trade it. Uh, interesting utility card. Void Shard, which I hadn't mentioned in a card for that face shadow deck, even though this is a shadow card, is because four mana deal four damage is not that efficient. But actually, now that I look at it, uh, you're going to be doing a bunch of damage to yourself. Maybe you do want a lifesteal. Uh, I was thinking this would be more of a control card, but this may be just too slow for that as well because 4 mana deal 4 and heal 4 has not really proven that strong for a card like Tidal Surge. Rogue has a fascinating quest and package to go alongside it. This uh, quest line is kind of sus. It's one mana, find the imposter, questline, play two SI7 cards, reward, add a spy gizmo to your hand. At this moment in time, I do not actually know what a spy gizmo is. And I don't know what the future part of the questline is, but presumably it's play two SI7 eight cards, play two SI7 cards, play two SI7 cards. Final reward is spy master scabs. Five mana, seven, seven, battle cry, add one of each spy gizmo to your hand. And again, I don't know what a spy gizmo is. So not much to say about that until you see how good all the SI7 cards and all the Spy Gizmo cards are. It seems like if you're going to play an SI7 deck though, there's a lot of support for that. So let's just look at all the SI cards, which you will probably be playing all of them in your questline deck, starting with SI7 Extortion. One mana, tradable, deal three damage to an undamaged character. So it's backstab, except uh, you pay one more and you deal one more. And it's tradable in the case that it's irrelevant. SI7 Operative, 3 mana 2, 4, Rush. After this attacks a minion, gain stealth. This looks like the weakest of the SI7 cards, but I wonder if you are still obligated to play it just because you want all the SI7 for a bunch of these synergies. Reminds me of SI7 Agent, which of course you can and should play uh, in your deck. Doesn't require combo, but immediately deals with usually a minion. This card is at its best if there's a lot of small minions with like two health running around so that you can actually rush something and kill it and have this survive so I can have stealth and then attack into something again. The big payoff for the SI7 cards are about to be shown here. You have SI7 Informant, 4 mana 3-3, three, three. Bellacry gain plus 1 plus 1 for each SI7 card you've played this game, and you have SI7 Assassin, 7 mana 4-4, four, four. cost 1 less for each SI7 card you've played this game, combo destroy an enemy minion. SI7 Skulker, 2 mana 2-2 two, two, stealth, battle cry, the next card you draw costs 1 less. Uh, this card, of course, goes into the SI7 Rogue deck, very efficient, as a 1 mana 2-2 two, two stealth, uh, given that you have discounted a future card by 1. 
So it seems like a very basic deck. Uh, I see this as a pace card deck, which will probably be outpaced by cards that are already existing in the meta. But to some extent, it depends on how good Spy Gizmos are. Will you play the entire SI7 package, or is the entire SI package useless? Uh, seems like all of these cards live and die together. Uh, Rogue gets some hilarious miscellaneous cards. You have Maestra of the Masquerade, 2 mana, 3, 2. You start the game as a different class until you play a Rogue card. You may look at that and think, wait, is that useful at all? In the case that you were to roll a Priest, for example, as your different class, your opponent will probably think you're not aggressive. Well, also, there is a face priest deck now. But it could cause the opponent to mulligan incorrectly. Ultimately, I think this is a meme card, though. Shaman does get a lot of support for Command the Elements and or an Overload deck. You may or may not actually play the questline in this deck. Uh, starting with Investment Opportunity, one mana draw an Overload card. That is, draw it from your deck. A one mana draw card is never quite that good, but if you really want to push the overload theme, you can. You have Charged Call, which is a very big overload payoff. A three mana discover a one cost minion and summon it. Upgraded for each overload card you played this game. Now you're gonna play a bunch of overload cards, especially if you're playing that quest line. This is a really good card to cast twice also. You've got Canal Slogger. 4 mana 6 4, Rush, Lifesteal, Overload 1, and an Elemental. This fits into a lot of different packages. Elemental package, Overload package, Control? Uh, that's just really efficient. It's 4 mana deal 6, and heal 6. Uh, kind of 5 mana if you include the Overload. Uh, the real payoff is if you actually manage to have the survive, this could heal you for 12. It could heal you for more if your opponent doesn't have an answer. Uh, just a really efficient card. Expect to see this in a lot of different decks. And you've got another big Overload payoff card, Spirit Alpha, 4 mana 2, 5, after you play a card with Overload, summon a 2-3 Spirit Wolf with Taunt. So if you play this card and simply play one Overload card, this card is worth 4 8 in stats uh, for 4. That's quite good, especially since the Spirit Wolf protects the Spirit Alpha, so if this survives just one more turn, uh, you get some pretty big payoff value. Now there's also miscellaneous synergies out there as well. We've seen Bolner Hammerbeak, which does look strong after you play a Battlecry minion. Repeat the first Battlecry. Auction House Gavel is a 2 mana 2 2 weapon with after your hero attacks. Reduce the cost of a Battlecry minion in your hand by 1. This could almost be seen as a 0 mana 2 2 weapon, since you are going to get 2 reductions on Battlecry minions. You can fetch this card with the Elemental, which fetches you a weapon as well. The gavel is nice because you could perhaps play what would normally have been an expensive battle cry on the cheap and then play it first and then play your bolner and then maybe you're getting a really big battle cry effect multiple times. And you've got granite forgeborn as well. 4 mana 4 5 battle cry reduce the cost of elementals in your hand and deck by 1. And as an elemental, this could go into the elemental deck, this could go into the battle cry deck. Perhaps there's some crossover here, a battle cry elemental deck. And again, here's that Canal Slogger, which is just a great add to the Elemental deck. Keeps you alive against the aggro decks. So definitely some possibilities for Shaman here. For Battlecry, for Elemental, for Overload. Warlock's got some really interesting packages as well. Uh, the first is a Zoo package, uh, which is just good stats for the cost. Bloodbound Imp, 2 mana, 2, 5 Demon. Whenever this attacks, deal 2 damage to your hero. So usually you're getting a 2 mana, 2, 4 with some downside. This is a 2 mana, 2, 5 with some downside. Maybe it is just a little bit too much damage, but Flame Imp didn't hurt too much. It's like three damage. You handled it. Uh, if this attacks twice, you're taking four damage. Dreaded Mount is an interesting card for a zoo type deck. Uh, three mana, give a minion plus one plus one. When it dies, summon an endless Dreadsteed. What's a Dreadsteed? Well, it is that three mana one one card, which when it dies, it summons a Dreadsteed. This could be good for the Zoo deck, because a Zoo deck wants to control the board with its minions, and Dreadsteed is a very good card at controlling the board. You know, just one damage each turn to stuff. Now the other side of the package is the Handlock side, and I had mentioned when I saw Dark Alley Pact, eh, I don't know if there's going to be enough Handlock support cards. There's Rune Mithril Rod, yeah that's nice for the Handlock deck, you draw a bunch of cards. There's a Netheron, so you've got your Netheron, and you've got your Dark Alley Pact. 
it's kind of like your uh, Mountain Giant and your Twilight Drake. But the big question is, is there more support? The answer is yes. Entitled Customer might be one of the cards that ties it all together. 6 mana 3-2 Battlecry deal damage equal to your hand size to all other minions. That's like a Twisting Nether, except only 6 mana and you get a 3-2. Uh, given that your hand size is going to be very, very large. And maybe your hand size doesn't need to be that large. Uh, if you're playing against aggro, uh, maybe you keep up with them and then you play this for minor AoE. That is our really strong card for this deck. And if you thought that wasn't enough, there's a bunch of neutrals that also support this handlock theme. I had seen the Spice Bread Baker, but I didn't see enough handlock support to think that Spice Bread Baker was gonna be good, but now that I see all these handlock cards, I'm like, oh man, I really could use some health equal to my hand size, which is going to be very large. How is it going to be large? Well, look at all these neutral cards that support this theme. You have Encumbered Pack Mule, which is a 2 mana 2 3 taunt. When you draw this, add a copy of it to your hand. This is just generally a good card, but especially good if your hand size actually matters. It's like a 2 mana 2 3, which adds another 2 3 to your hand, but it's better than that because you know you immediately get it up front. The only downside to this is sometimes you're at 9 cards in hand and you tap and you draw this Encumbered Pack Mule into your hand and you don't get the bonus extra 2-3, but hey, you still have a 2-mana 2-3 with Taunt, which isn't a bad card. But this card is just so good for everyone, but especially good if your hand size matters. That's insane. Hey, Handlock, how about we give you a 3-mana 5-6, which can only attack if you have at least 8 cards in hand, but that was your plan anyways. If you're going first, you start off with effectively 4 cards in your hand, you go to turn 2, you draw a card, which is 5, you tap, which is 6, on turn 3, you draw a card, which is 7, you play the Package Runner, which is 6. On turn 4, you tap, and then you have 8 cards in hand, and you can attack with the 5-6 that you played for 3. That's such a big boost to Handlock, to actually be able to play something that can do something on turn 3. Wow. And then, you have not just the Cherry on top, but this is actually the Mountain Giant of Handlock, if you thought Handlock hadn't gotten enough cards. Goldshire Null. 10 mana, 5-4, rush, costs 1 less for each other card in your hand. Instead of the Mountain Giant's classic 8-8, eight, eight, uh, and it used to cost 12, and you would play that on 4, Goldshire Null, you can play for 1 mana for 5-4 rush. That's insane! A 5-4 rush is not better than an 8-8, eight, eight, but it provides you that speed that Handlock didn't have. Wow, this is the card that actually could make Handlock. As your resident Handlock player, I'm here to let you know that Handlock is real, and Handlock has the upgraded Jaraxxus. That's insane. Over in Warrior Land, we see the quest line for Warrior. It's Raid the Docks, quest line, play three pirates, reward, draw a weapon. I do not know the second part of the quest line. I also do not know the third requirement of the quest line, but presumably they're both to play pirates. And the reward is to summon the Juggernaut. I have no idea what that means, but presumably this is some very good stats for the cost. Uh, Captain Rukar is a 5 mana 7 7 pirate. It would seem to me like this would be a tempo y deck, and we'd have to see what the Juggernaut was and what the second part of Raid the Docks is, but there's definitely a lot of pirate support as a package here. You had, of course, Shiver Their Timbers, which may or may not actually be played in that deck. Harbor Scamp, though, that's an insane card. 2 mana 2 2 Pirate, which simply draws you a card straight up. Yeah, that's really, really good. You've got Cargo Guard. 3 mana 2 4 at the end of your turn, gain 3 armor as a pirate, which is very interesting design for a pirate. We have not seen a control pirate yet. For that reason, it possibly will not fit into the quest line pirate deck uh, if you're playing a tempo or mid range deck. You have the adorable Stormwind Freebooter. 3 mana, 3-3 three, three, pirate, to battle cry, give your hero plus 2 attack this turn. That's just some really good tempo. It reminds me a lot about the uh, the rogue 3 mana, 3-3, three, three, which gives your weapon plus 2 attack. Uh, benefit of this card is you don't have to have a weapon equipped. And other benefit is it's a pirate. Whether or not you're actually going to end up playing a pirate deck is going to depend on how good Raid the Docks is as a card. And, you know, I think we can perhaps just assume that they probably balance it such that it would be at least somewhat competitive. Uh, so there you have it. 
And if it isn't competitive, Harbor Scamp will probably become the next Town Crier, where you're probably going to want to include 4 to 5 pirates in your deck, just so you can play Harbor Scamp, since she's just that good. She fetches Sword Eater, she fetches Stone Maul Anchorman, those are just really strong pirates in today's meta. And you have Cowardly Grunt. 6 mana 6 2, with Death Rattle summon a minion from your deck. This card is clearly meant for the big warrior archetype, which I don't really see working at the moment, but this is a good card for the big warrior archetype. It's like Gather Your Party of old, uh, which is 6 mana to just summon a, to recruit a minion from your deck. Now you get a free 6 2 with it. Nice. What a collection of cards for our classes. And I've already snuck you a sneak peek of all those new neutral cards that are coming, but there's even more that are impactful. So let's take a look at the neutrals next.